Um, even in Sweden, there are three different systems that we use. <laughs> so they are incom incompatible with each other. And uh, Europe is even worse, there are even more, so even more incompatibility. And also, unfortunately, in Sweden, all of them are proprietary and also doesn't work at all. For example, 64 bit platforms. And, um, okay, yes. This, uh, okay, so we have, we have three different uh, EI systems in Sweden. Uh, Freebid, which is a free software project that I'm in, involved in, uh, it implements the client guide system and solves this problem as well. Okay, so <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this, this list is also not exhaustive. The, there, is much more, there are much more systems in Europe. Um, many of them are proprietary. We have a lot of work to do, we could say. <laughs> okay, third, bank ID, physical ID, it has a certificate. It can be a soft token and it can also be a smart card. Um, this is unlike most other systems, most people don't use uh, uh, soft tokens for electronic ID, but I think we know that actually. Um, it's also some work to use uh, cell phones for authentication. Uh, we use a, use a SIM card that can work as a key store. So. Okay, so Freebit, as the official software is proprietary, Freebit is reverse engineered. Um, it's been one year since the public release, uh, so it's quite unstable and alpha most uh, features or there, but uh, something, some stuff like, for example, enrollment is not implemented yet. Um, we have the C soft tokens and uh, the smart cards. And smart cards is what is done through, through an SC, but you can actually use anything in the ELAB, you can say it's a Technical information, uh, <coughs> free bit, we can even see if it, that's something really uh, we use the security library, crypto library, we use uh, OpenSSL. Um, in the beginning we used NSS actually, but uh, we found that it was too, it was too centric. It had a, it's a database uh, oriented model where it's hard to use tokens that are separate from the database. For example, they are on a file or on a USB stick or something. So we decided to go for OpenSSL instead. And of course, we can SC for smart card support. Works for people well. Um, we also used the uh, free, but it's a browser plugin. Um, it, uh, we use the Netscape plugin API. It's a really old uh, API from Netscape. Fine. Um, it's, uh, it works in pretty much all browsers except Internet Explorer. <coughs> So, this is the signature, the way you get a signature from the bank ID software. It's uh, really simple. You send the here. You send a nonce value and some text you want to design it with the plugin. And uh, then you call a function on it and back. Or first you get a confirmation window where you, you see the you can see the message you want to sign and you can uh, you can also okay, yeah, password translate your token to you and so on. So when this is done you get an XML signature. Uh, you can see this data here, it's data is going through. Um, and you also you have some uh, it's very information here about the, the domain name and I, IP address, which is probably there. So, IP address and domain name probably to prevent managing the and looking uh, attack, phishing, and so on. And all security. Uh, otherwise, it's a typical uh, XML signature. So, it gets chain and uh, Biggest signature. 
quick. Um, and the protocol uh, is a bit more complicated. It's not that hard. Uh, also based on standards. This is its name. Pkcs is 10, then 7. Um, certificates of standard formats. But the protocol itself is not standard, standardized. Uh, they use some some extensions to these uh, protocols. They are not the true true standards, and that has made it slightly harder to implement in uh, OpenSSL and so on. Because we need to create uh, ASM. It is quite technical, but uh, we need to create the uh, ASM one uh, uh, objects and so on for special special data structures. Okay. So there are a few di difficulties. Uh, of course, it's a secret protocol that we reverse engineer. Of course, um, it still uses a lot of the standards, the XML, GSIG, uh, B2T standard, or usual usual stuff that we use on TKC7 and so on. And. Uh, one problem here is that uh, the server side software is not uh, publicly available. So testing your software, and there are also, to make it even harder, there are also different implementations. So you better be completely, uh, generate completely the same output, uh, make everything 100% compatible. Uh, also, of course, as we deal with the uh, legal finding signatures, um, the only way to test things is to actually sign things. Uh, that makes the bugging a bit fantastic and a bit harder. <laughs> but, uh, sometimes, okay, there, there was a bug on a page when you register a new business, and okay, that's obviously something that's hard to like test yourself because when you need to register a business, it's difficult to. Okay. How many businesses do you have now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we also, there was also, as I told you, we use MSS initially. And, uh, huh? Sorry, I don't know if I should be interrupting you, but I don't know. We say secret protocol. Who controls that protocol? So, uh, this is, uh, it's uh, like a corporation of the Swedish banks. They have formed an organization that was uh, created their own. But they won't tell you. So, okay. even if you sign an NDA? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't think so. <laughs> so. They have their own uh, client, so they want to control everything. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, another very minor uh, annoyance. <coughs> Uh, this protocol uses blocking JavaScript calls. That's a design in the protocol, and that means that when when the, this uh, sign dialog appears when you enter your PIN, your browser window is frozen. And that is, we have a real ugly hack for that. But this is something you really can't do anything about. So the future plugin developers uh, don't use blocking calls. Okay. We can speak some about the uh, browser security in general, browser security software in general. Um, how we should make it, what we should think about and so on. Uh, also, we might not just want to use it for electronic identity because there are many other places. I mean, the technology you, you use in the bottom is uh, I mean, that's public key technology generate signatures and so on, and that can of course be used for other things. For example, an alternative to passwords, uh, alternative to session IDs, which could prevent things like cookie sealing, uh, stolen password databases, of course, don't have passwords, and dictionary attacks, sleeping, etc. Um, of course, if, you just, if this is just what you want, you can use TLS. If you just want authentication, you can use VLS, SSL, same thing. 
Um, but then we don't, we don't get the signatures. Um, and why do we want to see that they don't? And they want to read them probably on the new but For example, you may want to store the signature, you want to prove to someone, a third party, that this agreement has been made as well. Um, there's also the question of should you see what, uh, what you're signing? Uh, so this is something that actually all EI did protocols don't do. And I think all of them actually, they actually rely on the software and the computer uh, and the software that plays the message. Yeah. And that means that if, of course, if the computer gets compromised, then it will change the message. That is the place the user is treated against the signing, nothing else. Uh, and that is something that's really hard to do nothing about. But if you just display the message that the user is signing, uh, we have to, to at least prevent some kinds of attack, uh, and middle name and so on. Probably the use SSL in this case, but it's still additional security because you know there are security holes in, in SSL implementation and so on. Um, and one more thing that you need is uh, time stamping. Uh, this is because the signatures you have, they need to last for a very long time. Typically, it can be 10 years before it's typically mandated by some law somewhere. Um, there are two, okay, the time stamping means that you add, you typically hash everything you have signed up, and it is secure time stamping. And this means that if the crypto algorithm uh, behind the signature, if that is broken somehow some time later, then hash will prove that the, that the signature was made when the uh, crypto system was still not broken. This is, means that we can use uh, crypto, uh, we can <coughs> rely on your signature for a longer time. And there are two different approaches. One is more centralized one where you use the trusted third party. You can also use uh, that in pub publishing your hashes essentially because it's in some place where you can verify it. And as another problem, this is not specific to uh, signature generation, it's also a problem of uh, yourself. <coughs> you can't, there's no standard for doing enrollment. The generating key pairs is not standardized at all. Uh, there are some vendor specific approaches like key and tag in Firefox and I think that form has some JavaScript object or something that you can use to generate a key pair in the browser but it's, it's uh, mostly or it's unstandardized so you have just different approaches for each browser. Um, this is something that could something that each of the or I think most most of the EI systems have to do as well. Have a, their own solution too. Um, you also have the question of how do you protect privacy? Um, in some cases you might not want to reveal your identity, but you still want to be able to log into a website. For example, you book something and you want to be able to later unbook it. Um, but for, in this case you of course don't want to use normal EI boots. And uh, I don't have a good solution to this, but okay, if anyone has any knows any good solution, you can raise your hand or something. But, uh, a simple solution is just to generate different, different uh, key pair each time. So you have to use the first token, it's just the hard part, it's going to allow so many, many different tokens. Of course, you will also want to build on. If you create some new standard, uh, you would want to only implement a uh, layer between, essentially between, between the website and the TPC S11 interface. You don't want to deal with the crypto because you already have the TPC S11. And that doesn't mean you can use software as well. Um, signature formats are important, they are actually standardized. Um, 
I think pretty much all of you, I'm not sure if all of them, most of you EM, EIDs use Hexodes. Uh, Bike ID is an exception because we use Hexodes DC, but on the other hand, Hexodes DC is a, uh, a predecessor to Hexodes. Okay. Uh, so here are some different existing preferred ethics and software and also standards that are or specifications that are in progress but they don't have implementations yet. Uh, for example, we have different EIDs, pre-build, SVID software. We also have <coughs> the WASP project, which is uh, a uh, that it is on a, it's not implemented yet. The implementation, but there is an application. Okay, is it, Anders, is it, do uh, you have any comments? Uh, <coughs> Anders, do you have any comments on the WASP? Uh? On the WASP? Yes. Okay, it's something I started um, a few years ago. It's a uh, uh, suggestion for a signature in browser. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, signature in browser specification. Uh, you know, that's some just for reference, like SSL or TLS here. Uh, so there's also a project called GPG Alt. That's not education only, but that's GPG uh, keys can be used for signing as well. You could extend it. And probably this list is not exhaustive, or I know it's not exhaustive. So I think we were actually finished before time. I don't know. Very well. That was good, okay. So I made a tiny URL a link. Uh, this is a link to the Freebit Wiki. So uh, good links to different standards and different projects and different related things. Okay. Okay, questions? Thank you.